Here with me right now is GB News's very own documentary filmmaker with an exclusive for us. Charlie Peters, take it away. What's going on? Well, it's, it's an extraordinary story. I mean, I promised on your show a month ago that I'd be coming after people in Rotherham Borough Council who'd served during the period of this atrocity. And, well, we've got the first scout with Dominic Belk, who's had to stand down as Labour's parliamentary candidate for Rother Valley. And now we have another in our sights here in Maruf Hussain. So Mr Hussain was in the council from the early noughties. Indeed, he was the cabinet member for community cohesion from oh. 2005. Now, he was brought into the cabinet again in September 2014 when the Alexis J report revealed the extent of the suffering. She found 1,400 girls, as a conservative estimate, mm. have been mm. abused in the town. The National Crime Agency has since revised that up to 1,510. Now, while he was serving in the Cabinet for that period after the J report, he had to resign in disgrace in February 2015, along with the leader, Paul Lakin, and the rest of the Cabinet, when Louise Casey found that the Council was in denial. Now, lots of people were referred to anonymously mm. in this report by Dame Louise, but, you know, with Mr Hussain and indeed another councillor called Jahangir Akhtar, she went so far as to actually name them due to the seriousness of the allegations against them. Now, mm. Akhtar and Hussain were both described as senior Pakistani members of the council who would influence decision-making and would influence the actions of the council. He is, it was found in the report to have been stifling discussion into the rapists. So fact, some would call that a cover-up? Well, I mean, those are words that I would certainly use. In fact, he pushed back against a police officer right. who wanted to investigate... Mm. The link between the grooming gangs and taxi drivers, Mr uh, Akhtar, his friend and colleague Jahangir, he was, in fact, he was a taxi driver before he became a Labour councillor. So there was clearly an issue where people who wanted to look into the scandal were told not to. Right. And what happened then was this stuff was all freely mm. out there in the public domain. Mm. And one would assume, Charlie, that if you and I had done something along those lines, we'd be, well... Maybe, I don't know, in prison, but mm -hmm. I dare say not working again. Yeah. What's this particular chap doing now? Well, extraordinarily, he cried racism first and foremost. So oh. He accused a fellow Labour councillor, unnamed at this moment, mm. of being racist when he tried to raise the issue of the ethnicity of the perpetrators in the just town. By yes, just, happen yeah, just by saying they happen to be British by Pakistani men. Precisely, just by raising a pattern which was observed oh. by many people in town and indeed lots of the victims and survivors. Or the facts. So, indeed, and indeed the truth showed it in both of the reports. But uh, Mr Hussain allegedly made this accusation. The Labour Party today refused to confirm to GB News the outcome of the investigation after he was accused of making this false accusation of racism. The Labour Party also failed to confirm that he was still a member of the Labour Party. He might still be a member of the Labour Party, extraordinarily. But what we do know is that he works for the NHS in this diversity and inclusion and participation role for a body which is called Health Education England, which aims to inspire and educate and train the next generations of people working in medicine in Britain. So here is a man who, survivors from Rotherham, who've lived in the town for 30 years, told me prioritised, this is their view, mm. they pri that he prioritised so-called community cohesion over justice for rapists, is now the national lead for diversity and inclusion at a major NHS body. I think it's scandalous. Well, it certainly sounds like a scandal, Charlie, and I'm just going to add a little bit more fuel to this particular fire because in that role, one would imagine that it's the taxpayer paying his wages. Mm. Yes, well, it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a public body. It's a non-departmental public body, which is a form of essentially a quango within the government whereby you get lots of public sector cash and you're aligned with a department, but you're not really within it. It's all very strange and murky. And they also, we have contacted them for comment, that is Health Education England today. They did not get back to me in time to be involved in this coverage tonight. No, we have contacted all the relevant parties. We have gone for a response from all the relevant parties with a very degree of success, it must be said. And Charlie, as well, I just want to ask you, how on earth do you think it can be that we live in a society where if you are at least accused mm. of covering up or stifling an investigation into an industrial-level child mm -hmm. rape and grooming gang, that you can somehow find your way working in the NHS. Are there no checks here? Well, fundamentally, nobody else is looking into this. What's been extraordinary for lots of my investigation for this for GB News over the last year mm. is that I'm uncovering stories that have been lying in plain sight for years, in some cases for decades. Mr Hussain has been in the NHS since October 2020. He was promoted a few months ago. So 
it escapes criticism because people have moved on. People don't seem but to care very much about what's, this. What's fascinating is that presumably, and there's no way of confirming this, but presumably on his CV you would mm -hmm. have, what was it, community cohesion... Yes, a cabinet member. Yeah. You know, community yeah. cohesion. And that, if, if that job was done well, mm -hmm. you could see why he might be a good candidate for the NHS sure. diversity and inclusion thing. Mm -hmm. But someone would have only just had to have checked online to yeah. see how well or otherwise he did that job. Well, I mean, he was on the front page of The Times on the 6th of February 2015. Finally, the truth after the lies, said the headline. His face bang on the front of the page. So clearly, due diligence has not been applied here. Uh, well, I presume. And the, the broader cases, I think, do you know what? I think EDI is often a huge racket where people promote each other, they promote their friends, and people get away with extraordinary backgrounds in this area if they say the right things. And just finally on this, Charlie, we can't forget about the victims mm. in all of this, even if society has, it would appear, even if the vast majority of the media has, even if our politicians have. Mm -hmm. And victims who've already potentially, not in Rotherham, but in, in Rochdale, potentially had to bump into their perpetrators at the shops. Strong rumblings that a particular chap who was involved in the grooming gang scandal as well worked as a delivery driver. So you might yep. have got a knock on the door one Indeed. day, here's your pizza mm -hmm. and the guy who groomed you and raped you, mm -hmm. etc. Yet again, this is a case, is it not, of victims being forgotten? Absolutely. And the extraordinary thing, again, I mean, there are so many extraordinary things. I keep saying because it, it really is yeah. the case. But many of the victims I've been speaking to around the country, not just Rotherham, Rochdale and Telford, but mm. beyond, all the way up to Glasgow, all the way down to Bristol, many of them still live in fear. Because, as you said, they see their abusers in the street, they see them in the shops, they see them at work. They can't avoid them. No. A lot of them live anonymously. When they are activists, they do it under a fake name, you know? They have to write under a pen name. They live in fear because our society has moved on and justice has never been delivered for But them. actually, it's about time the perpetrators and those involved in what was an industrial-level scandal but an mm. industrial-level cover-up started being very afraid themselves. I, They've I, got I, away for this for too long, haven't they, just I, quickly? I quite agree. And we need investigations into every major town and city where credible reports of these abuses have been taking place. If we can't bring them to justice this year, when will we? Absolutely. Charlie, thank you. Thank you very much for everything that you do. Charlie Peters there, GB News' very own documentary filmmaker. We are not going to drop this, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot believe that it's as difficult as it has been to get this kind of stuff front and centre on the news agenda because it is a proper pandemic. We've had one type of pandemic. We're going to come on to that in a little bit. But this is an ongoing pandemic. I just want to read out a comment from the Labour Party spokesperson in relation to what Charlie's just been talking about there. It says, all complaints are taken seriously and assessed in accordance with our rules and procedures. On background, we do not comment on any individual cases or individuals on the record because our disciplinary procedures are independent and confidential. Make of that what you will, ladies and gentlemen.